Welcome into Mustang Saturday. Good evening. I'm Chris Roush. Thank you for joining me on this adventure this summer. Lots of great stories to get to tonight. Already finishing up week number two of the season for the St. Joseph Mustangs. Hard to believe that we're finishing up the second weekend of the Mustangs baseball season and so much already happening on the field, away from the field. And on this show, we'll give credit where it's due to those guys making plays on the diamond. Our pitching's been really good. Our defense, we've made a few, you know, mental errors that led to some, some physical errors. Guys are getting more comfortable. They're getting looser. I can tell they're starting not to be as nervous. And, uh, you know, that's the most important thing about hitting is just being, staying relaxed. And they're doing a pretty good job of that so far. Every summer features some kind of reunion for the St. Joseph Mustangs. Whether it be old faces coming back to visit for the alumni games or even coming back to face the Mustangs. It's a feeling very few that suit up for the Mustangs ever feel. The adrenaline of taking the mound against your former team. Steve D'Amico did just that Thursday night at Phil Welch Stadium. The drive up here was very nerve wracking. I had to play a lot of music, a lot of calming music, uh, just to kind of because my heart was racing a thousand beats a minute. Uh, it's one thing pitching for them, it's another thing going against them. D'Amico took them out for the Monarchs, and while the players have changed since he last played for the Mustangs, the emotion's still the same. Kind of here in the crowd, you, you, you listen to a lot more of what people say on the other side. I was super pumped. Uh, it was very welcoming, um, but I'm glad like they didn't go easy on me. He spent four summers in St. Joe, 2014 to 2017, playing for the Mustangs. I came on as kind of a backup arm for the NBC. Uh, you know, came in, threw a bullpen, talked to Johnson, and he was just like, yeah, I mean, we'll take you and everything. Then manager Matt Johnson kept the opportunities coming for D'Amico. Going up to me and just being like, you're the closer, you got it. Um, it kind of took me back for a second and it was just like, am I that good? Kind of terrifying at first, but then, uh, you know, he puts a lot of trust in his guys here. And I think that was kind of one of my biggest steps into pitching well. Uh, into my four years of college and even now. D'Amico's career a little unorthodox. He spent five and a half years serving in the United States Navy before continuing his college baseball career and joining the Mustangs. I had a blast, loved every every second of the military and uh, I think the only reason why I got out was to play baseball. The return to Phil Walsh Thursday night, an opportunity D'Amico looked forward to because he's still pitching and taking advantage of it. Baseball's been one of the biggest things in my life uh, and I just want to go out there and just see if I still got it. Steven D'Amico is a guy that you know I coached. Um, he's actually older than me which is kind of funny. I'm sure he's not going to be appreciate me saying that but yeah he's a couple years older than me. He's, I know he's still in good shape. I know he still throws hard. Pitching in front of his family and even his former host family Thursday night under the lights at Phil Welch Stadium. Another reminder to just how much the game means to him. Just kind of go out there, I feel like I still got it. I want to see what I can do. Um, just at this level, I'm not looking for anything past this, but it's, uh, you know, I just want to throw competitively. It's one of my biggest things I've always done my whole life. Baseball is obviously one of the biggest parts of what makes the Mustangs so special to the St. Joseph and the surrounding area. But the organization also about opportunities, which is why they've been big in promoting softball and making sure to celebrate a sport so many girls across the world love to play. Fans pack Phil Welch Stadium during the summer months to enjoy Mustangs baseball. But it's not the only sport the organization promotes along the way. I think it's huge. I think um, it speaks very highly to Kai. I think um, just making sure that everyone's being included. I think it's also important for young girls, you know, as I say this as a father, to have, uh, you know, these strong women as their role models as well. The St. Joseph Mustangs made a splash with softball fans back in 2018 when Reagan Nash, an intern at the time, and also a Mizzou softball player, became the first girl to play in the Mink League. I didn't play to prove that I could play out there with the guys. I tried to make it seem like that was the only way that I could play in the summer. Girls don't have as much opportunities as boys do playing in the summer, especially at the college level. Building off of Nash's appearance, she hosted a softball camp, seeing more than 100 softball players show up. I loved it. I mean, we had a great turnout every year. And just the amount of girls that just came out and just the amount of people that just want to learn 
and want to learn more about the sport is insane. The Mustangs' support for softball goes beyond summer camps, with multiple college softball players also interning with the club. With just all, all the opportunities that are out there for college softball players, not only just college baseball, but I, I think it's great that the Mustangs are trying to incorporate both sports into one, into a camp, to get more recognition and justify the sport. It makes me really happy to see younger girls playing. It honestly reminds me of like me and all my little friends on our team. It was just some of the best memories that I have had. Bree Blant, a Griffin softball player, and JC Wynn, a Bearcat. These two just the newest two after former Griffins pitcher Lexi Kennard interned and helped with camps in 2019. Them doing that and allowing softball players to help or softball players to run it and those baseball guys being there, you know, all, every, all the kids love that part of it and so it just brings them in and then to get to show them a piece of um, softball, to show them a piece of baseball, I think um, it's so awesome just that they're, they're willing and able to do something like that for this community. Just in recent years, there's been an influx in interest around college softball, especially with this year's World Series drawing millions of viewers. Between the World Series and the Mustangs locally, the game of softball getting well-deserved attention here locally and across the country. We want for them to enjoy baseball too, but uh, you know a lot of them are softball players, and so it's it's great for them to come out here and see someone like them and what they can, you know, with a little bit of hard work, what they can, you know, hopefully set a goal for themselves. And so uh, those camps are a great way for the to help grow the love of their game, uh, to to meet a new role model, and and ideally to have a little bit of fun. Still ahead on Mustang Saturday, don't go anywhere. Former Savannah Savages expected to compete for a state title their senior years, but COVID-19 derailed those plans. However, they're back together again this summer, playing for the St. Joe Mustangs. More on their story coming up next. And also after the break, the St. Joseph Mustangs announcing the 2021 St. Joseph Baseball Hall of Fame inductees. We'll talk with General Manager Kai Turner about it and much more after the break. You're watching Mustang Saturday. Many great St. Joseph baseball legends rightfully already in the St. Joseph Hall of Fame. And every summer, the inductees honored by the St. Joseph Mustangs at Phil Walsh Stadium. This year's inductee features the entire Pony Express baseball. Reason being, the organization plays a vital role in helping grow the game in St. Joseph and the surrounding areas. Pony Express Baseball heading into the St. Joseph Baseball Hall of Fame and the man who made the announcement, Mustangs General Manager Kai Turner joining me now. Kai, welcome back for another week of Mustangs Saturday. I'll start with the first question, the Hall of Fame announcement. What made Pony Express Baseball deserving of this year's nod? Well, first off, happy Saturday to you and all of our uh, viewers on air. But, you know, Pony Express Baseball is something that we can all uh, reflect back on uh, whether it's baseball or softball growing up. That's some of our fondest memories as as kids, uh, you know, and the fact when we had a chance to play. And so now as a parent for me, like I love watching my kids going out there. And so uh, the organization itself is just ran by a bunch of volunteers. Now you talk about how much Pony Express baseball does, but I, I want to take you down memory lane a little bit and talk about what the Mustangs have been able to do for a, a decade plus now. Um, what's maybe some of your fondest memories of being out there? You've been there since the beginning of the Mustangs in some form or fashion. Just what's some of your favorite memories that you hold dearly? Well, thank you for asking that, Chris. I'll tell you, uh, I think you're just trying to age me, but you cannot do that. Uh, I but, can try. You know, I think, you know, it was the first year, uh, actually the poster over here next to me, uh, starting it off that Friday, June 5th, we had the, uh, uh, the world famous chicken when we had Rock and Ray and the Sky Dogs USA. And, uh, you know, we've, we've also hosted the Philly Fanatic and it actually rained that evening and, and we had a shortened game. And uh, I believe we went out to Buffalo Wild Wings after that event and he just sat there and told us stories about his times with the, the Phillies and, and he's still there. And so, uh, you know, those are really special, but then you also think about the on the, on the field moments when, you know, Adam Maddox, uh, no hitter to win the Mink League Championship. Uh, you know, our most recent one in 2019, that one really holds a special spot, especially with what happened in 2020. Uh, and, and then even opening day this year, I mean, every year there's a lot of moments that stick out to you. Uh, and it's really hard to pick one, uh, but really it's, it's, it's just a lot of fun all smashed together, kind of like a s'mores. 
s'mores, huh? Is that, like, yeah, you, you want you want s'more Mustang baseball. I want some more news coming from you about something coming back here in the next you know few weeks that people can be excited for. What do you got? Well, thank you for asking. Uh, one big announcement uh, for us is you know fireworks are back. Uh, we weren't going to have a fireworks show until July third and fourth, uh, uh, but you know what? The, the aerial effects has done an incredible job, and and. Uh, just listening to our crowd, I mean, we, we've got to do it. And so shout out to uh, Mustang's owner, Dan Gerson, who's who's uh, gave the green light on this. But, you know, this Thursday should be a lot of fun. It's the return of our uh, dollar hot dog night, which I know, Chris, you partake in a couple of those. Anything you want to say to the to the viewers about our dollar hot dogs? They're really good. I enjoy them. Thank you. Well, 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 well let's see what well we say there. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Uh, you know, one of the iconic uh, baseball memories and you talk about Pony Express baseball. So it's funny I mentioned these guys is, is it's our Sandlot night. Of course on Friday night, dollar beers, but it's also 80s nights. So we're gonna have some 80s jams pumping all night long. Uh, I know when I saw you working out to the Zumba class earlier last week, yes. uh, it was 80s and, and uh, boy, were you getting after it. 80s uh, is your childhood, yeah. 80s is definitely yeah. your childhood. So yeah. uh, 80s night is something we're looking forward to. Then of course, Saturday, uh, it's our Space Jam night where we're, we're going to hand out this pretty cool poster with Johnny and, and uh, Johnny Coy and Rally on it uh, that looks like a Space Jam poster for each of the first 250 guests. And of course, we have fireworks. More fireworks. And, and? more. I, I, I can keep going, Chris. Just give I me the, the full full half hour. Hi, thanks for coming on again this week. Chris, thanks for having me. I love being here. Thank you. You're welcome. I'll see you at Zumba next week. Well, I'll be there. 80s music? Always. Thank you. An opportunity to play together again after high school. It's an opportunity many athletes dream of doing with their old teammates but never get to. But these five former Savannah Savages reuniting on the diamond this summer. As the Mustang season rolls on, it's a rare opportunity for five guys who all played together in high school. Like usually you only had that many people from one college come play for us this summer. Now we're talking about a small town about 10 minutes north of here. Braden Berry, Noah Bodenhausen, Micah Diamond, Dakota Spicer, and Chase Spoonmore. All Savannah graduates, all reuniting this summer. It's honestly like a reunion. I mean, obviously I know other guys that are on the team from different schools, but, uh, but having them, uh, I mean, we were together three to four years. We all stayed in touch. Uh, we worked out together. Um, after we were done in high school, we've, we've stayed working out together um, in the summer and off seasons. These five former Savannah standouts played together on that 2019 team that took home a Class 4 third place finish. We had a lot of guys that really wanted to be successful and uh, put in a lot of time, a lot of effort to make a great team. We had great team chemistry, we worked hard together all year, um, and we had been playing together for so long, um, along with playing under Coach Bodenhausen. While Spicer and Diamond graduated following the third place run, the other three still dreamed of making it back to the Final Four in 2020 until COVID-19 shut those dreams down. We were looking to build upon that, but we couldn't because of COVID. I mean, it shut things down, but it also made us appreciate baseball even more, and the, it makes us appreciate, like, Coach Bodenhausen, Coach Kip, like, everything that we could, like, that they helped us do before we were obviously canceled. The baseball careers didn't end after high school for any of them. They've all went on to play college ball. And by knowing and playing against Johnny Coy's teams in high school, a bond quickly formed. I know Johnny really wanted to get all of us together, not only because we're all from here, but we've all played together. We know a lot of guys um, on the team already. And uh, it was just a, a good combination to have all five of us here. On top of the relationship with Coy, these guys see another familiar face in the Mustangs dugout. Former Savannah standout and Mustangs pitching coach Preston Bailey. For them, I think it's that chance to finally just be able to celebrate the end of the year winning a championship. They got like their season cut short. The five Savannah guys reuniting this summer, playing alongside ball players they played against in high school, all hoping to keep the Mustangs at the top of the league. I think this summer, like I said, it's just a chance for them to finally put it all together and finish what they started. The fact that we did everything together for three to four years, like football, basketball, baseball, and then just being back out here, what we like to call home, is very valuable to me. 
Plenty more still to come on Mustang Saturday, including hearing the booming voice filling Phil Welch Stadium every summer. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight's Taco Bell came man of the night. We'll take a look at the Hall of Famer Greg Caster's impact on the St. of Mustangs. Stay tuned. Welcome back. When you think of Mustangs baseball, you think champions, fun, family, fireworks, so many things can come to mind. But summers wouldn't be the same without a familiar voice booming over the speakers throughout the stadium. Ed gets into it. Is Ed here tonight? He's the voice of the Mustangs. He's the only voice the Mustangs have ever had. It feels like home again. I mean, when you come to a Mustangs game, I mean, he is predominantly who you hear talking. His baseball buddies, Peyton Moore and Zane Slagle. Since day one of the St. Joe Mustangs, the players change, the coaches change, but there's just been one voice louder than the rest. Designated hitter, Ike Book. The Hall of Famer, Greg Kastner. My wife, she'd always say, and this is a good, good example right here. They say, she always tells people, you put a camera or a microphone in front of my husband, he'll talk all day, so you better take it away from him or he'll never shut up. That's a good thing because caster has been the public address announcer for the Mustangs at Phil Welch Stadium but his career in baseball goes much deeper. One of the best pitchers ever at Missouri Western. Drafted and worked his way through the Atlanta Braves organization. A teacher, a coach, administrator for more than 40 years. The ballpark always been a big part of the St. Joe Great's life. People say, why do you get here at 4 o'clock game until 7? I said, I want to prepare. I want to know who we're playing. I want to know, I want to know the players. I got to get their names the lineups, those things, how to come, how to pronounce names. You, you, I'm a perfectionist. How do, how do you pronounce names? Every night when Caster takes a mic and addresses the lively Mustang crowd, he wants to leave the fans happy. Maybe we ought to do some karaoke. I try to make it such that, you know, they leave the game saying, that was a great game. That guy up there is, is really does a great job. You've got to have fun with it. It's a game. The game always starts out with play ball. It doesn't say work ball. It's not a work, it's not a job, it's a game. Well, ladies and gentlemen, tonight's Taco Bell came man of the night. I think he has uh, the, the dedication to, uh, to the organization to make sure that, that the, the product they're putting on the field, that he brings that forth to the fans and points that out to the fans. Full of laughs, celebrations, and just good times. Enjoy some beverages. Meet a new friend. Kastner enjoys these days, and so does everyone who interacts with the Hall of Famer. He's incredible, he's awesome at his job, and I know he has a lot of fun with it. You know, he's just loved by St. Joe altogether. My passion is just, is baseball. And I, I, I don't know what's gonna happen the day that I can't do something with baseball. Whoa, where's your just a bit outside? I want to, but I feel bad. No, I do it all the time. <laughs> Mustang Saturday rolls on. After the break, we get a look at what a day in the life of rally consists of. You won't want to miss this. Stay tuned. Have you ever wondered how Rally gets ready for every Mustangs game at Phil Welch Stadium? The preparations, the routines, the superstitions, wonder no more. We take a look at a Mustangs game through Rally's eyes. Rally is the star of the show, especially when it comes to the Mustangs. Our players may change every year, but who stays the same? Rally. And so, He's also the one who's here all year long, and so, I mean, he'll do appearances not just when the season ends. Uh, he's out and about in the community just doing various things, whether it's children's fairs, birthday parties, or uh, new business opening, or, or trade shows. He, he's, Rally's out there. When Rally comes out here, you know, Rally's just, I mean, he's, he's the life of the party. And so uh, he is he is the brand of the Mustangs. And so ultimately he is the symbol of what we're trying to do here is, is for, for families. And so for you to come out here and have fun with the family and, and uh, you know, Rally can do that inside the ballpark, but also outside the ballpark.
We'll wrap things up for this Mustang Saturday. Coming up, we'll take a look back at some of our favorite sights and sounds for Mustangs baseball this week. You're watching Mustang Saturday right here on KQ2. Welcome back to Mustang Saturday. Thank you once again for joining me this week on this incredible journey. I hope you enjoyed it. Plenty more stories to share this summer and can't wait to share them with all of you. We'll be back next week right here on KQ2. Until then, here's some sights and sounds from this week in Mustangs Baseball. Round of applause, 1,459.